A lot of people have asked if they can get a job with a basic foundational certification like the cloud practitioner. We all would agree that in such a very competitive market, that is going to be really challenging. Uh, it will be a huge challenge getting a job with a cloud practitioner. So this is just something to get your feet wet in the field and then of course get to the main certification or know how to actually map those resources that you learned in the first certificate basically like finding a way to understand how to merge the vowels and the consonants to actually create a sentence so it's understandable so look at it that way you with the cloud practitioner you're basically learning the abc's and then the next level which is the associate you're trying to form a sentence or words and eventually a sentence with that certification. Let's talk about your roadmap to obtaining your AWS certification. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're preparing for an AWS certification or you're thinking about getting one in the future. And um, I'm also assuming you're wondering what certification to start with or do you even really need a certification or should you just get the skills required to start your AWS cloud journey? Look at it this way, um, getting a certification just simply validates the knowledge you have or the skills you have gained in AWS. And most recruiters or most companies would require certifications because that's one of the main documents that validate that you actually know what you're talking about or you know what to implement, you know, um, which is by taking the AWS exam. So taking the certification is also is really very important for you to validate your knowledge. When I started my cloud journey, um, getting certifications were really um, one of my priorities, which was not the right way to go. Um, gaining the skills should be a priority and then getting a certification should be a second priority, which would just help you validate the skills that you've gained. So, so far I have the foundational level certification, which is the cloud practitioner. And I also have the solutions architect associate and the solutions architect professional. AWS has designed a really good roadmap for you to follow while you're taking certifications. So there are four different levels of certifications you can take in your cloud channel. You have the foundational level certification, you have the associate level certification, you have the professional level certification, and then you have the specialty level certification. Let's start with the foundational level certification. This would be the certified cloud practitioner um, exam or certification. If you're new to the cloud and you really want a basic level understanding of how the cloud works, the business benefits, the cost services, then I really suggest taking the cloud practitioner foundational certification. It's an easy and a very, very basic introductory level certification to cloud computing. And it sets that pace for you to start gaining technical skills, understanding the cloud services, and even trying to map cloud services to what it's basically like the ABCs of cloud computing. The AWS core services like security, architecture, pricing, support, what an EC2 instance is, um, what networking is within AWS. It basically just introduces you to the core concepts and terminology within AWS and explains to you their different functionalities. So for those who have no idea what cloud computing is or have never been in the I would advise actually starting with an introduction, you know, or starting with a cloud practitioner certification. Now, um, the certification details, um, some people, depending on what level and what time you dedicate to studying, you can take from between two weeks to even two months and sometimes three months to prepare for the certification. The exam costs, you know, a hundred dollars and there are 50, 65 questions in the exam. The exam duration is 90 minutes and the passing mark is 700 out of a thousand. So there's a lot of debate about the job roles uh, with getting a cloud practitioner certification. And I believe we can all agree that with the competition and um, challenges in the job market today, a cloud practitioner wouldn't really give you that job or you find it difficult getting a job with just a cloud practitioner certification. Some have argued that you can get entry level cloud roles with a cloud practitioner. Yes, you can get cloud sales roles with a cloud practitioner and marketing, but then it's also, again, still very, very competitive when getting to the job market. So this is just basically an introduction to cloud computing. Um, if you want to further it or actually be a solutions architect, you'd have to take it to the next level to, to get a good job. So for the associate level certification and either take the solutions architect, um, the devel developer associate, the sysop admin associate, or the data engineer associate. And all these specialties have different um, things in which you, you know, 
specialize in. Um, I know there's a lot of confusion when people are moving to the next step, if they should start with the solutions architect or the developer or sysops or data engineer. My recommendation would always be to start with the solutions architect because it gives you that technical depth in, to, in understanding how to design and manage your cloud workloads. Then you can, you know, of course, switch to taking the developer, which focuses on developing and maintaining applications um, on the AWS cloud platform. Why I advise taking the solutions architect is because it gives you that general overview of understanding how you can match and map the different resources within AWS. Then the developer would take you a little further to understanding the applications or the sysop admin or the data engineer. Those people who've taken all these certifications before going into the professional, I just took the cloud practitioner, the solutions architect and the professional. But in today's competitive world, I would really advise you take a solutions architect and maybe a developer or solutions architect and a sysop admin, you know, just to take it up a notch and be more competitive in the market. Examination details, some people Take all the average paperage time is between three to four months. The exam costs hundred and fifty dollars, which is a little uh, more expensive than the foundational level um, examinations. And you have about sixty-five questions to answer within a period of one hundred and thirty minutes. You know, and the passing mark is seven hundred and twenty, unlike the foundation, which was about seven hundred out of a thousand. So you see, when you take it a level higher. Um, so many things change and with the associate level certification you can actually get a good job maybe a solutions architect a cloud consultant you know a systems administrator a devops engineer or any of those certifications that you've taken that can qualify you um to be or to work within um aws you know yeah you can take it and like i also said earlier sometimes aws organizes challenges where they offer about 50 percent or 75 percent of your exam cost if you look, see it's going to save you a lot if you could pick up one of these challenges or benefit from it and also it gives you a time frame to prepare and you know you're working with a disciplined time so Taking these challenges are really helpful. I did for the practitioner and it helped me a lot. I didn't even pay for my practitioner exam. And when I passed the practitioner exam, I got a 75% voucher to take the second exam. You know, when I passed the second exam, I think by then I was a community builder and I got a free voucher to take my professional exam. So I hardly really paid for any of these exams. So just look out for these. If you take the practitioner, you might be lucky to get um, I don't know if they give out those discounts again to take a second exam, but it's a very, very good incentive that they give out for you to take these exams. Now, moving on to the professional and specialty certifications, we'll would notice that we have the professional, which is separate from the specialty. And for the professional, we have the DevOps engineer professional, which focuses on operating, managing and deploying applications on AWS platform. Then we also have the solutions architect professional, which is a validation of advanced skills in designing distributed systems. These professional certifications have been considered to be some of the most difficult certifications to take. And when you're at this level, you're literally considered an expert in the field, right? And then um, for the specialty level certifications, we have specialties in networking, machine learning, security. And today we have generative AI, which has been added to the pack of, you know, the specialty level certifications as well. And for the professional and specialty certifications, it does take a longer time to prepare for them. It took me about seven to eight months. The average time is six plus months. And the exam cost is also really expensive, $300. Um, I was lucky to take it for free with my community builder voucher. Then you have about 75 questions, which you have to complete within 180 minutes. And the passing mark, again, they take it up a notch from the associate, which was 720 with the professional exam specialty certification you have to get 750 out of you know a thousand and this again like i said these are some of the most difficult exams to take particularly the solutions architect professional within aws and now for the job roles it really depends on your specialty it could be a security specialist a principal solutions architect a machine learning engineer a generative ai engineer so it really depends on your specialty for and whatever you specialized in the certification and now your aws journey should really be uniquely yours and backing on getting your certificate should be tailored into what your career aspirations are and also don't forget that you need to develop as you're preparing for these certifications as you're developing hard skills 
understanding the main resources, the concepts within AWS. You also need to develop soft skills, which is one part that a lot of people, you know, forget to work on. And when I say soft skills, it means communication skills, presentation skills, because as a solutions architect, you're going to be consulting a lot with clients and you're going to be doing presentations and talking to clients or even maybe an engineer, even talking to the C-suite, right? So soft skills are also very, very important as you're preparing for this exam. Aside of that, um, define your certification goals based on your career aspirations and set timelines as you um, work towards these. Then utilize AWS resources, prepare diligently. I shared 10 resources in one of my videos and free AWS resources you can use to prepare for your exam. And in another one, I shared 11 different roles within AWS what they entail, their salary ranges and all that. So you could look at all these videos and they would help guide you on how to define your own roadmap or design your own roadmap that suits you as you're preparing for your certifications. Well, now there you have it, um, your ultimate AWS certification guide for 2024. As you prepare for this, I wish you all the best. Check out our description for in-depth resources or extensive resources you can also use as well. I hope this video was of value to you and that you really loved it. If you did, like, subscribe, share the channel or reach out. Let's see how we can grow our career together. Thank you.